have the urge to resurrect the potato cannon and see what we can destroy. I dug this thing out from out back. It's been sitting outside for a couple years. The uh, igniter on it was toast, so we got to replace that and then uh, just go over it. I don't know, I'm a little concerned with it sitting outside for so long, whether it's gonna blow up. It might, it might not. Either way, it'll be fun. So I'm gonna get going replacing the igniter and then uh, see what we can shoot through it. Final words of a redneck. Hey, watch this. I'm gonna run a long wire back to that igniter so I can be way out of the way when this thing goes off. I got a feeling this thing got a little brittle sitting out for the last couple of years. And it went through a bunch of freeze thaw, freeze thaw cycles. Didn't get a lot of sunlight, but ah, I just don't trust it. And I've got a budding career as a hand model, so you know I gotta keep these things intact. Not to mention this. I mean, come on. It'd be a shame to mess that all up, wouldn't it? Okay, the potato gun is pretty much ready to fire, but we gotta get something to shoot out of it. Potatoes are great, corn cobs, apples, all the produce is wonderful, but I wanna see if we can make a real projectile, something that'll actually, you know, do some damage. So what do you do when you got junk wood, an old junk motor from 1960 whatever that's been sitting outside? You make a redneck lathe. So, I've got a little hunk of dowel. We're gonna put it on there and see if we can't turn this into something that'll shoot pretty well. Hey, check it out. This is the wire that came off that 1960 whatever electric motor that's on the lathe. Yeah, yeah, no, that was fine. There's nothing wrong with that. so far. This one I wrapped with tape just to take up that extra little slack in the tube to make it fit as tight as possible. This measures 1.98 inches. The tube is 2.02. .02. So I wrapped that up a little bit to take up the difference. Hollowed out the back. We'll see how that goes. This one, a little bit shorter front on it, a little bit blunter. Um, and then I hollowed the back again and then cut these rifling grooves in to see if we can't get a little bit of spin on that to make it fly better. And then this one is just kind of a basic um, pellet shape. I haven't done anything to the back yet because I got something special planned for that, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Um, so we're going to see how that goes. I gotta go find it. <laughs> All right, that one for sure knuckleballed. We're gonna do the button of the uh, grooves cut in it and see how it does. Ah, that was a long walk to go get that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 yes! <laughs> Let's go look at that. That was awesome. Just a, uh, just a baking tin. But look at that, it split it. Oh, that is so awesome. Okay, so the question is, what can make this better? I got an idea. Okay, so this guy with the grooves, uh, definitely flew straight. This is the one that cracked the pan. So I'm thinking I'm gonna take and cut grooves into the rest of all these, um, see how those go. But I got something else in mind too. If this cracked the pan, I think we can make it go through the pan. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's 
gotta go through. Alright, we're gonna try the armor piercing. It's heavy. I don't know how it's gonna go. Where'd it go? Oh my god! <laughs> Holy crap! That thing, that must have gone like 300 feet in the air. I lost sight of it. It's way out in the cow paddock, I think. Go look at the, look at the baking sheet here. Holy crap, that hit with some power. I think it broke my, the chunk of wood there, I think it broke my bullet. It didn't go through though, so I'm guessing it, um, I don't even know where it hit. Oh no, I think it hit right there. It hit the sawhorse, it didn't hit the, didn't hit the tin at all. So, that's a bummer. That was that first one that knuckleballed, so we'll have to go look and see what it looks like. I'll go find it. It's intact. I think, uh, this is that first one. I think it's a little too heavy. I probably ought to put the, uh, that armor tip into the lighter one that flew straighter. We're gonna give it another go though, and we'll see what it does. <laughs> yes! <laughs> it went right through! Oh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> that's, that's the desired effect right there. Let's go look. Oh, that is so awesome. Oh, man, look at that. Holy crap. I mean, this isn't the thickest thing. It, it is a, a baking tin, but it's probably 16th of an inch. You know, it's aluminum, but that's just pretty darn cool. All right, All right. so this thing, I put a match head in there. I was hoping it would be enough to ignite it, but I think it's just too fast. The gases are expanding too quick, and it's uh, just not getting hot enough to ignite it. So I might try pulverizing it and putting like match dust on there and see, but it, I don't know, might just not be hot enough in that combustion chamber. It was worth a shot. We probably ought to shoot that armor piercing one one more time though, don't you think? Oh my god! <laughs> I think it's stuck in the back of it. <laughs> yep, there you go. Took my boards right off the back. That thing is... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well, I guess I'm done there. That's just too much fun. That's awesome. So the, uh, seems like this guy did all right. It was a little nose heavy. The other one that I tried to put a match on, it, it wobbled all over the place. Again, I think too much, too much nose. The one that flew the best was the one that looked like our traditional pellet. So I think going forward, making more of them, I'm gonna go with a smaller nose and a bigger tail. Just helps to stabilize it and I definitely will cut those grooves in. But this is just way too much fun. We're gonna have to revisit this again.